Welcome to the FeedForward uh, Control Workshop. In this workshop, we'll gain experience uh, using FeedForward in combination with Feedback Control. In the first part of this exercise, we'll examine Feedback Control without FeedForward being incorporated, and then look at the step test that we need to do to characterize uh, FeedForward, and then we'll be applying that to the PID to compensate for a measure disturbance. And uh, we'll be then uh, looking at the response improvement that we achieve uh, using FeedForward in this control. Uh, through this exercise, then, we'll be addressing the question of what is the benefit of FeedForward control. For this exercise, uh, we're using a steam heater in which a liquid flow through the heater is heated. Uh, we're measuring the outlet temperature. Uh, PID controller is adjusting the steam flow. The inlet temperature is a measure disturbance, which we're going to use as a feed forward input to our temperature control. So let's get X started with our exercise. We have a dynamic process simulation of the steam heater in which we can introduce uh, the inlet temperature as a dis measure disturbance to the process. The outlet temperature is fed in to our PID and is adjusting the steam flow. The uh, measured uh, inlet temperature is coming as a feed forward input, but initially in our PID, the um, control is set up where the uh, feed forward is disabled, and so it's acting strictly as just a feedback controller, and as we can see here, is, is sitting at a, an automatic at set point. To examine the impact of a disturbance on our feedback control, we can change the inlet temperature by step. As we can see, that uh, directly impacts the inlet temperature and is, its impact is then seen in the outlet temperature of our heater. The PID then, when it sees an error from set point, starts to adjust the uh, steam valve to compensate for the disturbance. This is better seen by looking at our trend. As we can see here, where we introduced our inlet temperature disturbance that impacted the outlet temperature, in response to that, the feedback control then adjusted the steam valve to compensate for the uh, disturbance and to bring our temperature, outlet temperature, back to a uh, set point. In this case, though, we had to have an error, that is, the outlet temperature had to deviate from set point before there was any correction in, by the control to compensate for the disturbance. We can improve the control through the use of um, feed forward. To do the step test needed for uh, the uh, commissioning of feed forward, we need to put the control into manual. And uh, in manual mode, then we'll change the outlet of our the out of our control uh, and uh, examine the response of the process to that step change. So in this case, we've changed the uh, inlet, the steam valve, by about 10 percent, and as we can see, that is impacting the outlet temperature. This is better visualized by looking at the chart. Uh, for this, and as we can see, um, based upon the uh, step change in our steam valve, the outlet temperature responded and eventually settles out a new steady state value. Once uh, the temperature is now settled, we can then look at the impact of the measure disturbance on our process. In this case, we're able to actually induce a step change into the measure disturbance, so we're going to induce about a 10% change into our measure disturbance. And again, as we uh, can see, it uh, has an impact on the outlet temperature of our heater. In this case, with the control and manual, there is no compensation for that, so we can see the true impact of the disturbance with no corrective action. In this case, we can see there is a much smaller impact on the outlet temperature. In examining this response and the response to our steam valve, we see that the dead time and time constant associated with response is about equal. So all we need to do in our feed forward is have a feed forward gain. There's no need for a lead lag or a dead time block. 
by looking at the magnitude of the change in output over the change in the manipulated as well as the disturbance we can then calculate the gain and when we do this we determine that the gain associated with our manipulated parameter is 1 the gain associated with our measure disturbance is about 0.3 and therefore the fee for gain should be 0.3 divided by 1 minus that so it's the negative of that so our fee for gain should be minus 0.3 to uh, set up our fee forward then we're going to uh, change the fee for gain to what we calculated our minus 0.3 and we're also going to enable our uh, fee forward uh, once we have then enabled this then we're going to put our controller into automatic mode as you notice the uh, the uh, temperature is um, maintained uh, the temperature set point has been following the temperature so there's no bump when we go to automatic uh, to see the response to a disturbance we're now going to introduce another 10 percent change in our disturbance input this time we can see that the controller immediately compensates that is the output changes even though there's been no change in the actual measurement this is better seen by looking at our chart as we can see when the disturbance changed by step the outlet of our uh, controller also changed immediately and as a result there was no change in the outlet temperature so we've been able to eliminate this uh, disturbance impacting our uh, outlet temperature through the use of uh, fee forward and by having the correct gain and setup of that fee forward we hope that this exercise has been helpful to you in better understanding the way fee forward is commissioned and its benefit in terms of minimizing the impact of a measure disturbance on uh, the control loop. We hope you utilize this exercise to better understand uh, fee forward control and the commissioning of fee forward.